So, welcome back. Here we are still inside a mud box. And some of the last things I want to look at that can get you started with this primer um, here for mud box is the stencils as well as the stamps that we have inside of mud box. Now, stamps are essentially a brush or a uh, alpha map that attaches itself to the tip of the brush. So just like before, if I want to add in some more divisions that I can work with, if I want to add in some more um, polygons to work with, I can do that by hitting Shift D, make sure your mouse is over the object that you want to subdivide, and hit the Shift and D command. And then once you do that, you'll have enough topology to actually subdivide. Um, well, you'll, have, you'll, you'll subdivide the topology that you already have to give yourself more topology to work with and actually paint with or sculpt. Um, looking right now, I can see that I can activate any of these stamps. So I can come in here and click on any of these little stamps down here in my tray. Or I can hit off, and off will deactivate any current stamp that I have. So if I get this, let's say I get this like texture right here, and I use the B key and make my brush a little bit bigger, and then come in here and stamp this, you can see that this does give me that pattern that comes from the stamp and stamps it onto the surface. Now I can come back in here and get my smooth brush, hold down the shift key and get my smooth brush and kind of smooth this out so it's not as grainy. So you can see I'm able to stamp in detail by hand, which is really kind of cool. Now, <clears throat> the other caveat comes with, let me shut that off, the other caveat comes with my stencils. Now my stencils are a little bit different. They show up as these uh, images, like these grayscale images that kind of cover my entire screen. Now if you notice, if I hold down the S key, so S, as in simple, <laughs> the simple key, or the S key, and I middle mouse click. If I middle mouse click, I can actually move this. If I left mouse click, I can rotate it. And if I right mouse click, I can scale that texture. And when I scale it to where I want it, I can just come in here and paint with it. I think my brush is just way too, uh, the strength is way too high. When you're painting with it, when you're sculpting stuff inside of Mudbox, you'll notice that you'll you'll have to turn down your, you know, depending on what you're using. Like currently, as I talked about before, I'm using a Wacom tablet as I work with this. So the Wacom tablet itself has has pressure sensitivity. So the harder I press with the with the stylus, the stronger the effect that comes through on screen. So you you know if you're using something like a Wacom, you have to make sure that you're not pressing down too hard and getting too much um, you know distortion as you're doing that. Let's come back in here and make sure we did it. So you can see I can use these stencils and I can use a variety of them. So I could come in here and switch out my stencils <clears throat> and get different looks and feels. So I think this guy's gonna go for like real zombie looking dude. And this, everything else works the same. If I hold on the control key, it'll do the inverse. So control will press in instead of pressing out. So I can hold control and press this stuff back. Press it in. Um, and then I can turn off my stencils. And I can use my, my shift to smooth out some of this rather uh, grimy detail that's going on. Because you have to remember, your model is not just going to be the sculpting that you have. It's also going to, it's also going to be the painting that you do on your model. Um, so I can sculpt this and get this to look the way that I want to. So one other thing that we need, we should, we need to look at while we're still looking at this stuff is also how <clears throat> how these another couple of brushes work in here as well as my layers because we looked at we had layers inside inside of here now what's really cool about this is right now I'm currently at the highest level of my model which is level 3 and if I press the page up key so I press if I press once you've subdivided your model if you want to jump between the subdivision levels you can press the page down 
to go back and press page up to go forward and when you get to the, to the highest it'll you know mudbox will tell you you're at level th you're at whatever level is the highest level or the or the last level of subdivision that you're working with so this is what's really cool about working inside of mudbox i can do this i can actually come in here to level 2 and make myself a sculpt layer and let's do some sculpting in here let's just get my regular sculpt brush let's make it a little bit smaller and let's just come in here and cut in some detail right around here and I'm going to come into where the mouth would be at and actually carve carve in just carve this in a little bit so as you can see once again I'm going for that like freaked out zombie look I think I've been looking at a little too much uh, too many zombie flicks lately huh <laughs> So I've got this kind of laid out. I'm just going to go in here and smooth this, hold down my shift key and smoothed, smooth this stuff out. Smooth, 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 smooth. So I've got this stuff and I've got the sculpt layer. Now what you'll have to remember is whatever subdivision level you make your sculpt layer at is the only level that that layer will be active so right now you can see right beside my sculpt layer it has a little 2 right here so that means that this sculpt layer was made at level 2 when I jump up to level 3 you'll see I'm at level 3 right now this was made at level 2 and now the sculpt layer is deactivated so I can't the only thing you have to remember when you're using these sculpt when you're using these layers is that you can only use the layer at the level at which it was subdivided when you originally started sculpting on that layer so if I want to go back, I can always press page down and go back down to level 2 and you can see there's my sculpt layer, everything works fine. Now you might say, well why would I want to use these sculpt layers? Well, this is the real power of why you want to use these sculpt layers. As you can see, right now this layer says a strength of 100. If I take this and drag this down to like 18, you'll see it gives me 18 percent of the detail that I put into that layer so I can use these kind of like Photoshop layers and like I adjust like adjusting opacity this will actually let me adjust the amount of strength that layer has over my model so I can make a layer here and then I could go you know up go to level 3 make a brand new sculpt layer and I can sculpt on this at level 3 so let's do that let's grab this and I'll just sculpt on this at level 3 let's make him some big hollowed out eyes and bring the strength of this down there we go now usually when you're sculpting you know as I say, this video is not; these videos are not meant to teach you the finer points of sculpting. They're they're really to get you inside of Mudbox and kind of let your imagination go wild. Now, I will be making a subsequent video that actually um, takes you through sculpting out a simple a simple character, a, a fairly simple character. Um, so you know, I can come in here and sculpt this stuff and get this where I want to get my grab brush and I can kind of move things around and you know kind of pull this stuff around now you can come in here and turn on your mirror mode we talked about before so I can turn on X mirroring so if I go back and let's undo this some of these moves that I've made so let's say I go back in here and I have my um, mirror turned on now when I grab this and I pull on this you can see it pulls both sides at the same time everything's even so this is really how you want to sculpt a lot of your stuff you want to get the basic impression of what you're trying to sculpt with just using it was just using your move br it was just using your move brush and just kind of move this stuff where you want it you can also hold control and do inverse with this brush too So I'll just make this make my brush a little bit smaller, and that way I can just grab a smaller piece of my model. 
So it's really all kind of, you know, the stuff like that. Now, the same thing, the, everything I did before, I can also dial this down. I could come in here and say, you know what, I want to dial this down to nothing. Or So the, re the really the cool thing about using your sculpt layers is if you go through and sculpt this stuff and you say, you know what, this is not even what I really wanted. I don't even want to use this now. I don't like the way this looks. I can select that layer at the current level that it was created at. So at level 3, I can select this and delete this guy and now my model goes back to the way that it was before if I don't like what I did at level 2 I can jump down press the page down key and go down to level 2 go to this layer and delete this one as well and you see all the detail is gone now you might say well how do I get the detail of this of the stuff that we've already painted off of here well you can't anything that you paint directly onto the model itself is kind of baked into the model so you can't necessarily take this stuff back off I mean you could come in here and smooth all this stuff out and start over but that's kind of the power of setting up your um, excuse me but setting up your sculpt layers from the very beginning so that you can actually take on you can put on and take off uh, details that you've done without disrupting your your actual model now, one last thing that I wanted to look at before we left this and kind of went on our little merry way were some of the other tools that come with your um, with your brushes. So if I, click, if I click on my sculpt brush, you, you'll notice we've used the top part of the sculpt brush, so we've seen the size, the strength, the mirroring function, and instead of hold instead of holding down the control key, you can you can alternately just come in here and click on invert function, which will press in instead of pulling out whenever you're working with this. But something else in here that's really nice is the steady stroke function. So if I turn on steady stroke, what this gives me is when I click and hold, you'll see that nothing happens until the little green uh, line gets to the end of that line and makes a little arrow. So it, this lets you be able to have a little bit more control when you're sculpting, when you're trying to get curves and stuff like that so you can curve this around and you can see it works pretty well for me to kind of trace so really it lets me trace before it starts moving the brush um, but it's a really nice way to be able to to get some fine detail in and you know do this with a little bit of precision and kind of get this laid out now this is another one of those reasons why you want to be using a Wacom tablet so that you can actually have the ability to you know to pull this stuff just like you were like just just as if you were drawing so you 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 get the you get the feedback of this working like as if you were drawing this stuff out so you know I can pull this stuff but you can use the steady stroke function which is actually really cool um, the fall off down here we talked about fall offs before like you have your fall offs that are the presets in here so you have a bunch of fall offs that are presets but you can also come in here and arrange and make your own fall off so I could come in here and grab this and say this is the fall off that I want to use and when I'm using my brush it'll make me the fall off that I envisioned for my piece now the thing about this is you probably don't want to do like this you know you want to have one end of this up one end of it down because this is making the profile of the way that the, the tip of the brush will look so when you're doing this it'll make the tip of the brush now if you want to store this you can you can just come here and say store it and you can store it in there with the rest of your fall offs and now there's my brand new fall off in there and I can use that fall off inside of my model or on my model rather and I can make my own fault my own custom fall offs and have them for me to use which is kind of cool so that's been this lesson and in this lesson we've looked at our sculpting layers we've actually looked at being able to subdivide and jump between subdivision levels as well as what our stamps and stencils can do for us um, I hope that you find this very useful and beneficial as you continue your sculpting inside of Mudbox and you can use these tools to create your own digital masterpieces until next time